Hi guys and welcome back to yet another practical Rhino Jewelry Care tutorial. And in today's beginner's lesson, I'm going to show you how to make this eternity ring with shared claws for 2mm diamonds. As well as the how, I'll also be explaining the why, breaking down my decision making process along the way. With that out of the way, let's get started. And before we get stuck into the tutorial proper, let's just have a quick look at my setup. So the first thing we'll do is go to File at the very top left of the screen. Then we'll go to Properties. On the left hand side, go to View. Press the little arrow to expand. Then Display Modes. Then click Shaded. And if you go down to the bottom of this list, where it says Visibility, Uncheck Show ISO Curves and also Show Mesh Wires, press OK. Now to Layers. Let's delete all the layers apart from the default. So to do that, I click on layer 1, then hold down shift on the keyboard, click on layer 5, and we'll press the red cross to delete those layers. So we're just starting with one layer, and we'll add extra layers as we need them. Now if we go down to the bottom left of the screen, make sure that you've got end, mid, and quad checked, project enabled, and then below there in the center of the screen, we have ortho, osnap, gumball, and record history enabled. And with record history, Let's right click and check that you've got always record history checked and also update children. Now with that setup done, let's get started on the tutorial. So the first step is to import our 2mm diamond model to work around. So we'll go to File, Import, find our 2mm round diamond cut 3DM file. I'll put a download link in the description of the video. And with that selected, we click Open. This will import it into our world. So let's maximize our top view and zoom in on the stone to get a better look. And the first thing we're going to do is with all settings is put in a curve which matches the girdle of our stone. So we've got a round stone, so it'll just be a circle. So I'll go to the circle command here on the left. And for the center of circle, I'll snap to the center or the end snap of my stone, the cooler in other words. And then I'll snap to 12 o'clock on that projected end snap. Now we need to move this stone in the curve to the height that we want it to sit above the finger. So we'll need to put in a ring rail. So let's go to the new layer icon here on the right. And we'll call this ring rail. And we'll change the color of the layer by clicking the black swatch. And we'll choose brown from the list and OK. And then we'll also make ourselves active on this layer by clicking just here underneath the C column, which is the current layer. Now let's go into the front view because we always draw our ring rail in the front view. We're going to go to the circle command again on the left. It asks me for the center of the circle, so I click, or rather I type zero and press enter. And then it's asking me for the diameter. So I'm going to type in 16.7, as that's about a UK size M, and press enter. Now we're going to grab the stone and the curve. And using the green um, arrowhead on the gumball, we're just going to drag this up until the coolet sits just at the top of our ring rail. You may need to do this in a few goes, so let's just zoom in get this nice and accurate there we go and now I want this to sit one millimeter above the finger so and I'll click once on the arrowhead of the green gumball handle like so type one and press enter so now that's one millimeter above so now we need to work out how many stones we can fit into the model with the correct spacing between each stone so let's start with the spacing I'm going to draw a line with the polyline tool with the start of the line as being zero enter now if I hold down shift, that will temporarily turn off ortho to give me greater control. And I'm going to approximately place a line which lines up with the girdle of my stone on its left, and then left click. Then I just press enter to finish drawing. And then we're going to type offset into the command bar. Choose our curve to offset, which is this line we just drew. And then we're going to type in a distance of 0.2, press enter. And then make sure that we click on the left hand side of the line, left click, and that will offset this line 0.2 of a millimeter away. So now we have a kind of a safe zone or a barrier area where I don't want to see the girdle of the next stone to enter. So now let's select the stone. And we're going to type in array polar, enter. Let's zoom out a bit so you can see the full effect. The center of my ray will be zero because that's the center of our world or the ring rail. Zero and enter. Number of items, this is a guess to begin with, so I'm going to start with 20. So I type 20, enter. 
then I type 360 for angle to fill so it's a full circle. Enter. Now you can see it's now array 20 stones, 360 degrees. So we can see we've got quite a big gap. So we can update this live. So if we go into number of items here in the command line where it says items equals and click that. And I'm going to change the number now to 25 and press enter. Okay. The gap is a little bit too big. So let's try 30. Oh, nearly there, but it's still encroaching. So maybe 28. Gap's a little bit too big. So hopefully 29 will be bang on the money. There we go. That's pretty perfect. So I'm happy with 29 items. So I'm going to enter to apply. And now we know how many stones we're going to fit. And we've got the correct spacing between each stone. Now we can move on to the next stage of putting in the under bezels, which each stone will be seated into. So let's make ourselves a new layer. And we'll call this under bezels. And we'll make ourselves active on this layer. Again, by clicking in the C column on the tick. And then we'll change the color by clicking the swatch and we'll choose dark green. Okay, now let's zoom in on the stone at the top and select the girdle circle that we drew earlier. Choose the curve from the selection menu if you're struggling. And then I'd like to move this down slightly by about 0.2 of a millimeter. So I'm going to click on the arrowhead of the gumball, the green arrowhead, and type in minus 0.2, press enter. And now I'd like the backs of these settings to be tapered. So we'll go to solid, extrude planar curve, tapered. Now I think in this case an angle of about three degrees will be correct. And we can change the angle by looking in the command line here where it says draft angle. It's command currently equals three. So if yours doesn't, click that, type three and enter. Now you know you've got a good angle if where the left hand side of this collet where it intersects with our ring rail is approximately halfway between the two black lines that we spaced our stone out earlier. So we know they should overlap where they hit the ring rail. So make sure you click just below your ring rail so we can trim it off nice and neatly. Left click. Now that's applied. Just to trim off the bottom of this, we click on the ring rail. We type wire cut, press enter. Ask me to select objects to cut. Well, this is the uh, green under bezel and press enter. And let's have a quick look at my settings before we click or press anything else. So I've got normal to curve, delete input no, both sides no, and keep all no. Okay. And it's asking me for cut depth. Press enter to cut through. And we want to cut all the way through. So I just press enter. It gives me a preview now of which bit were removed, anything in yellow. If yours is the opposite way around like this, just left click your mouse and it will invert the selection. So I'm happy with that. So I press enter. And now the bottom of this collet has been neatly trimmed off. We can delete these two black lines now as they're no longer needed. So I just click one and delete, click and delete and turn. Now let's go into the perspective view. Zoom in on our stone and call it at the top and we'll change our viewpoint style to ghosted. So we can see here that the stone is currently sitting into this solid block. So we wouldn't actually be able to seat the stone into here. So we need to hollow out the collet at the top. So let's turn off the gem layer by clicking the light bulb on the gem layer and we're going to use the shell command. So type in shell into the command bar, press enter. And I'm going to set a thickness to remove of 0.8 of a millimeter. My mind's already set to that. If yours isn't, just click thickness here, type in 0.8, press enter. And we're just going to click the top face of this poly surface so that the bottom remains blind or closed off because the stones are so small. You press enter and there we have the shell effect. I would also like to impart a chamfer onto this edge so part of the seating for the stone is already done so we have less metal to burr away. So we'll type in chamfer edge and we'll set a distance of 0.6, enter, click on the edge. We've got two edges here to connect. Make sure you get a continuous unbroken yellow line. Press enter. This gives us a preview. Make sure this isn't breaking outside of the top surface and it's not. Press enter again. And then let's just check that against the actual diamond model itself by turning the gem layer back on and have a look. And we can see here we've got a fairly um, good angle here for the stone to sit into. And before we move on, let's just have a quick look at the surfaces inside this collet. So let's zoom in, turn off the gem layer, and I'm going to change my 
viewpoint mode to shaded. And you can see inside we've got a small column of negative space. Now that could potentially cause investment breakdown and investment inclusion during the loss box casting process. Depends upon how wide and deep it is. So let's look at analyze and distance at the top here. And I'll check the width by snapping to one side with a mid and the other side with a mid. And if you're looking at the command bar, it tells me that that distance is 0.338. Now let's see how deep that is. So I'm going to analyze and length. And we're going to click on this seam here on the inside and press enter. And it tells you that is 0.32. So they're actually roughly the same height and width. So that should be okay. But if you just want to make sure that we are uh, belt and braces with this, I'll actually would like to put a fillet on this inner edge just to open the top of this aperture a little bit. So we'll type in fillet edge and we'll set a radius of 0.4 of a millimeter, enter. And we'll click both parts of the edge here. Again, make sure we get that continuous yellow circle and press enter and enter again. So now in theory, the top of the hole is wide in the bottom. So the investment, which will be in that negative space during the casting process will be much stronger. Small point, but anything we can do to help increase the uh, castability of our models, the better. So the under bezel or under collet is now done. So let's polar array to fill the rest of the model. So let's go into the front view. We may as well turn our gem layer back on. Select the collet, type in array, polar, center of array zero as before, 29 items the same as before, again 360, keep pressing enter, enter one more time to apply, and there we have our base collets in place. So now we can move on to start making the claws. To make life a little bit easier, I'm going to hide all of the stones and collets apart from the one at the top at 12 o'clock, the first one we made, and its partner to the left. So I'll hold down control on the keyboard and press A, that's the keyboard shortcut for select all. Then I'll hold down control again and I'll deselect the stone at the top and the one to the left. And then I'll type hide into the command line and it will hide everything else. Then we can use zoom extent to zoom in and focus the camera easily on these two objects. Let's create a new layer to put our claws onto. Go to new layer, call it claws. You may also know these as prongs. We'll change the color of this layer to red and we'll make ourselves active on this layer. Now I want to create a center line curve between these two stones so that we can then pipe to create a claw which is shared between the two of them. So we're going to do that by first creating a center line for a hypothetical claw on each stone individually and then we'll create an average. So we'll use the extract isocurve command. We'll choose first the surface on the right here, making sure that our extraction line is vertical. If yours is horizontal like this, just click the toggle in the command line and snap to the bottom left facet corner point here on the center stone. Enter. Deselect the curve. Press enter again to repeat the command. Select the bezel on the left and snap to the opposite corresponding facet triangular point at the end here. So now we have two curves opposite each other. Now to create a center line between them, we're going to use the tween curve command. So tween curves. It says select start and end curves. Just select both of your curves. And you can see it gives me a preview of a curve between the two of them. So I'm happy with that. So I press enter. Now we don't need these two curves anymore. We can be deleted. And if we look, we see we now have a curve that fits exactly between these two stones at the correct angle and in the correct position. Before we can pipe this curve into a 3D claw, we need to extend its length a little bit at the bottom and quite a bit at the top. The extension at the bottom is so we can trim it neatly with our finger rail so it matches the bottom of our bezels and we need to extend it at the top so it's long enough for the setting process. And the bottom's easy enough, we're just going to extend it by a set distance. So I'm going to type extend, type 0.5 for my distance, and then click the bottom of the claw. Now this curve is 0.5 millimeters longer at its bottom. Now to extend the top, how far do we extend it? In a scenario like this, I would click my center stone, control C, control V to copy and paste, and using the gumball arrow, we'll drag it up until it's coolant is level 
with the girdle of the diamond below. Now ideally I want to extend this curve here so that its top is approximately level with the coulet of the new stone I pasted and moved above. So I will type in extend again. I'll set a distance this time of 0.25 so I've got a little bit more control over the length extension each time. And it asks me to curve to extend so I click the top end of the curve this time. Extends 0.25 and I keep clicking until the end of this line approximately reaches the girdle of the stone on top. So that's just over, but that's fine. Always better to have a little bit more than not enough. So now that's done, I press enter. We can delete the stone above. It's no longer needed. Let's go back into perspective, highlight or select our center line curve, which has now been extended. Type pipe in the command line. And we're going to enter a dimension or a diameter, I should say, of 0.8 of a millimeter for stones of this size, which is shared. So 0.8, enter. I press enter again to repeat the diameter at the bottom and enter one more time to say I'm done. Before we continue, let's just have a look at the intersection between our two stones in this claw. So let's spin ourselves around this way and we'll change our viewpoint style to ghosted. And what I'm looking for here is a small amount of intersection between the girdle of the stones and the shared claw. So we can see here that we've got a very, very small amount actually intersecting. I think we could do with a little bit more. As long as we don't have a total of intersection of more than one third of the claw's diameter, we should be fine for setting. So to move this in slightly, all I'm going to do is select the centerline curve. And as long as you've had your history on, it should update the pipe as we move the centerline. And we'll use the green handle on the gumball. We'll click its arrowhead and I'll type 0 0.2 to move it inward to distance of 0 0.2. Enter. Inspect that again. So I would say that looks a little bit more realistic. We want the stones to be nice and secure, so we need just enough intersecting, but not too much, so that when the setter cuts in with a burr on each side, the claw doesn't become weak at that position there. But that looks perfect. Now we can mirror this claw on the other side. So I'll do that in the top view. Click the claw, type mirror, and then we'll choose X axis from the command line above. And there we have our pair of claws in place, ready to be wire cut. So to do the wire cut, we need to bring back everything else we hid earlier. So I'm going to type show into the command line and everything comes back. Now we can type wire cut, select our cutting curve, which is just the ring rail, press enter. Then we're going to select both of our claws, press enter one more time, enter to cut through, Enter again, because we're happy with the preview. Remember, everything that's yellow will be removed or deleted. Enter again. And there we have the claws nicely trimmed at the bottom. Now there's one last thing to do here, and that is to address this quite deep but small gap here between the two collets. Let's turn the gem layer off and change our viewpoint to shaded. Now this small amount of negative space here could create investment breakdown and cause investment inclusions during the casting process. So I need to make a plug that fills this gap. So let's make ourselves active on the default layer. And we're going to go to curve, curve from objects, and then we're going to choose intersection. Or you can type in intersect into the command line. It asks me for objects to intersect. So I'm going to choose the two red claws, the two green bezels and press enter. Now if I turn off the red claws and the under bezel layer, you can see that where those objects intersected, it's created these curves. So we're going to use the snap points on these curves now to create a rectangle. So let's maybe delete this circle as it's not needed. Let's go to rectangle and then choose three point rectangle. Start of edge. You need to make sure that project is turned off for this to work. So if yours is turned on, turn it off so it's not um, grayed out. Then snap to one corner, opposite corner, and then the third corner. Now we can delete these intersected curves, like so. Select our plug, turn our under bezels and our claws back on. Let's go into the front view. We're in wireframe or ghosted, so we can see how far down we need to extrude. And we're just going to go to solid, extrude planar curve straight. Make sure that both sides is no, so I'm going to turn it off in this case, and that solid is yes. 
and drag it down until we're just above where our ring rail is. Click to apply. And then if we look at this in perspective, you can see that we've now neatly filled that gap. So obviously we need to do that for all the other gaps and obviously uh, add the rest of the claws. So let's select both claws, hold down shift, add the plug, go into the front view, zoom out a bit so you can see what's going on. I'm going to type array polar, uh, center of array zero, number of items 7429. So just enter, enter again for 360. Then it gives me a preview, enter to say I'm happy with the preview to apply. And now you can see we have all the holes filled, all the claws in place. And if we turn the stones back on, you can now see our finished model. And if you're not using any post-processing mesh software like ZBrush or 3D Coat, it may be a wise idea to Boolean union all of these individual shells together. So let's just turn off the gem layer. And maybe at this stage you'd like to do an incremental save because it can be difficult to undo Boolean processors. Then we'll go to Boolean Union. We'll select everything. Press Enter. Cross all your fingers and toes. And then we have one closed mesh. Let's just check it for naked edges to be on the safe side. So I'll go to Analyze. Edge Tools. Show Edges. Select my ring. Press Enter. And it tells me that it has found this many edges, but most importantly, no naked edges and no non-manifold edges. So this file should be sound for printing. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful, guys. If you've got a question or a comment, put it in the comment section and I'll try my best to respond. If you'd like to inquire about booking online Rhino training with me, just drop me an email. The address is in the description. And if you appreciate the free lessons I'm creating, you can say thanks by treating me to a coffee via buymeacoffee.com. Just click on the link in the description. And finally, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss my next video. See you next time.